homelessness is going to grow. The wealth disparity is going to grow. So this is going to take God's help, man. We've got to get this thing, man. We're so far down. We're so screwed, man. We're in a lot of trouble. We've got to admit it. We've got to confess it. We need God. We need God's guidance and help, his strength and comfort and encouragement. We've got to take the bull by the horns. We've got to put our feet down, even if it costs us our lives. We've got to stand up against these people. We cannot be cowards in the face of this evil that has been just... It's here, man. It's it's everywhere. It's the entire system. Most of the jobs revolve around the Satan's ambrosia and it's all the problems perpetuating and continuing and continuing. Okay, this is it, man. I mean, we've got to just understand how free we could be from where we are as a civilization. We're messed up, man. We need God. We need to listen to that still small voice, the Holy Spirit of truth that is convicting us and telling us two plus two equals four over and over until, you know, until we have reached our last breath. And then there's no more. There's no more jumping ship. There's no more leaving our, 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 our faux rationalizing, our faux beliefs and all this crap. We've got to say no. Now we've got to say no. We've got to say, I'm going to be free. I'm going to get off the junk, get off Satan's ambrosia. We've got to get away from the money-based unreality that's been shoved down our throats from birth. This this tax, this onerous tax, <coughs> they have used, euphemistically termed a cost of living. Well, of course you understand you got to pay for everything. <coughs> Nothing's free, right? Really? Okay. Well, I'm saying God's a lot different from the people that will tell you this crap. <sighs> Another classic paradox. The things we may be displeased, even angry at ourselves for, God may not be. Conversely, the things we think are A-OK -okay with God, God may be dis displeased with us about. This is it. I mean, this is what <coughs> the cunning nature <laughs> of the evil one within our own hearts, within our own minds, because of the training and because it's in our genetics. I mean, we're born basically evil with this sin, this sin nature, the fallen state, knowledge of good and evil, the corrupted state, and the consequent curse that befell humanity. So we're all under a huge handicap. So this is why God's mercy, grace, and compassion and forgiveness is so essential to embrace for ourselves and to offer to other people. We've got to give a damn. We've got to give a damn, okay? And we've got to reflect God properly and, um, and be somebody in that sense, you know? To really be somebody, we've got to be somebody that pleases God, you know? The very so-called reality that was shoved down our collective throats from birth is an arbitrary and capricious reality. That's right. And like I said, this same element, caliber of people, this New World Order cabal, these liars, cheaters, thieves, and murderers that create the policies we have to live under that they're exempt from, this is the money printing class, that great power. We got the mainstream media pointing at the multi-billionaires, the richest people in the world, and it's a crock of bull. It's a lie. I mean, if if you if you have the rights, the copyright to the money printing, okay, how much are you worth? You're worth as much as you say you're worth. You're worth a trillion trillion dollars or infinite amount. That's it. These are the infinite heirs. These are the people I'm talking about. If we would simply contemplate and assimilate the reality that we human beings absolutely need uh, that we human beings absolutely need others certainly we would treat each other with the respect we human beings deserve we need each other those people working in the factory we want to think less of them no we ought not do that okay 
because those are the ones that produce all the stuff that you're using day in and day out. We're all just, we're equal, man. We're, this is, this is determined by God, not by me or any man. Of course we're equal, and it's in the American Constitution, the belief in equality. We're all born equal, and a right to pursue happiness, and all this stuff. It's a beautiful, godly thing. And nothing supersedes the American Constitution but God himself. In light of the idea that we humans are indeed God's foot soldiers, the first line of defense here on the ground, his eyes and ears, if you will, we are forced to be brave and sometimes even sacrificed in our quest to fight this good fight until the righteous are victorious on earth. That's right. That's the only time that ends, that, that paradigm ends, is when we prevail, when God's will is established on earth. If you've ever wondered what justification, what reasons, what basis God may have to be angry with humanity, wonder no more. It is because we aren't kind, concerned, or loving toward one another. Not nearly enough to satisfy Him. This is it, man. We should treat each other with kids' gloves as best we can. Sternly and excoriatingly, but tactfully. So that it's to some avail, to some profit to some effect, so we are effectual for his cause. Of the things God has given me, and I believe all of us, if we value, acknowledge, and accept, is the gift of coping, the encouragement and comfort of knowing the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Truth, like Americans at large, have not gotten their way in regard to the direction America has been taking for many, many years. And I could give citations of all the different things that uh, we have tolerated, but, um, you know, I've taken us down a bad path. That's why to extricate ourselves from this mess, it's going to feel traumatic. It is our human duty to see that our rights are respected by all. And a right is an entitlement. Entitlement is a right. Equal entitlements, equal rights for everybody. Though we cannot say exactly how good God is, we know he's at least as good as we can imagine. Though we may not always understand the things we run to, you know, that we try to escape, we get into escapism, run from, and the things we run to and why we're running from, we can know who, why, and what we're running from. In every instance... In every case, for me, it's the miserable ramifications inflicted on us by the money masters of misery. Right, it's all the, the fallout from these evildoers. Justification through rationalization. The more nuanced, subtle, surreptitious, low-key, accepted form of acute and chronic hypocrisy. That's what justification through rationalization means. By the Apostle Paul in Scripture, we are told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, with profound reverence, awe, and submission. Instead of only myself suggesting solutions to nullify the negative effects of money on our society, things like a God-given prosperity, birthright, sound and logical economic policies, sound currency, or a guaranteed income, I cannot help but wonder what ideas, what fixes, and other others have, others might have. Do most people even admit, acknowledge we need drastic monetary policy changes to turn this ship of utter fools around? With the manner in which society in general thinks of the poor, that is generally with loathing, consternation, and disdain, seeming to believe that the poor have a disease, a moral deficiency, or are otherwise just failures, weak or stupid, you'd think the poor were actually the rich. I qualify that statement with Jesus saying words like, it's harder for a rich man to go to heaven than for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle. We humans cannot indefinitely, forever, allow our vapid fixation with one alluring form of escapism or another. 
Not when deep down inside what we really crave and need is the wholesome, real sustenance of absolute freedom, safety, security, contentment, you know, those things that translate to true, lasting, permanent.